Hideaway. Rainbow, live from this summer. Did you think it would ever happen? Dreams do come true after all. One of the folks that was there on stage is joining us right now, a friend of this show, a great lady, a great talent in her own right, Miss Candace Knight. Candace, are you with us? I'm here. Hi, Tom. How are you? It's always great to uh, have you on the show, but it's especially cool because we've got such a great thing to talk about today. Of course, a couple months ago you were with us and you had released Starlight Starbright, your first children. CD, The Candace Knight Project, and how has that gone for you? Let's start there first. Oh, it's going really, really well, actually. We've gotten so many people calling in, writing in, talking about how the music has really helped them. Uh, we originally thought, well, I originally thought it was going to be out there just for children, but um, mm-hmm. when I put it out and then I started hearing the feedback, everybody wound up using it for their own purposes, which is always an amazing thing when you see it take on a life of its own. So right. whether it was used for... Um, for relaxing, even adults coming home from a hard day, you know, having a glass of wine and listening to the music or um, um, helping children with sensitivity issues was another big one. Doctors were using it in, in the operating room or the birthing rooms for, for brand new babies. And wow. uh, and I think the most one of the most interesting stories was the one you told me about your dog. Uh-huh. Uh, my, which, my crazy um, pit bull. <laughs> <laughs> Your beautiful, beloved pit bull, I'll say. Um, but seriously, like how it, it actually winds up helping um, animals that have, have been abused animals, and it winds up calming them as well, and, and also veterans. So a lot of people have um, have wound up told, you know, telling me um, about different issues that they've had where the music has soothed them and helped them in, in many, many different walks of life. So that's always amazing to hear that. Well, I'm glad that it's doing very well for you. Hopefully it's going to start a new series for you as well, as if you're not busy enough, of course. <laughs> <laughs> There's always room for new stuff, always room. There you go. Well, we are here today to talk about something. You kind of teased last time you were here, you were talking about uh, Rainbow getting back together again. Of course, I was very excited, waiting for the shows to be announced, and then you announced them in England and Germany only. Uh, <laughs> wow. It's like, thanks a lot, Candace. But Sorry uh, about that. I uh, did think you were going to just take your vacation at that point and get a ticket and because they head pay, on over there across the pond. Because <laughs> they pay me so well here. That's I can do that. <laughs> you uh, have to do a remote. You have to do remote broadcast from there. Now, that's an idea. <laughs> this album isn't even out yet. We just played a song, Highway Star, which was from those uh, summer recordings in June of 2016 just past us, and I believe these are like the worldwide debut on air because uh, the album's not out until November 18th. Right. And it's a, it's a DVD and two CD package, also available in Blu-ray. And then coming out uh, later, I understand that you're going to be doing uh, vinyl as well. Is that correct? Yeah, that's absolutely right. So there's lots of stuff in the works for, for them, which is it's very exciting because it's, it's, I mean, to even just to hear those songs live on stage in a live environment. And of course, you know, I know a lot of bands go in and they uh, they kind of tweak what the sounds are like, the vocalist or, or other, you know, they, they fix things, uh, the studio magic that can be done after you have the, the product, you know, in, in hand. But in all honesty, they listened to these tapes and they just thought that they were just great. So nobody's touched anything. It's totally in its raw format. So um, wow. you get to hear exactly what we were hearing when we were on stage and exactly what the people were feeling and hearing in the actual audience when, uh, when Rainbow came back on stage after... After, what, decades of hiatus. So it it was really just the energy, the excitement level. It's it's all right there for you. It's amazing to hear that there's really not much tweaking going on because, as you mentioned, it's been so long since Richie played these songs in this format. Uh, To be able to, to come out of the cage swinging like this and to have it just sound so great. Oh, yeah, and he definitely had to relearn a, quite a few of those songs. <laughs> it would usually be the bass player saying, no, this, it's not this note, it's that note. But, mm-hmm. um, but you know, you can't, you can't really tell Richie what to do or what to play, so he's going to do his own thing, and, uh, you know, everybody kind of just goes along. They, you can usually see the other band members just watching him intently and hoping that, you know, what they're going to play is, is the right thing, because if Richie, if Richie zigs, they've got to zig. If he zags, they've got to zig. So they, right. they stay on top of whatever he's got to do. But what an amazing group of musicians. So, um um, you know, if they they know what Richie is all about, and they know that um, his improvisational skills are just stellar. So, um, so these guys have really got to be on their toes, and they they were amazing. They totally made it work, and uh, the song sounded fresh and new, even though everybody knows them. Everybody was singing along with them, and mm-hmm. it, it was just powerful. It was just so intensely powerful. Of course, the collection includes all the songs we would expect, but there's some surprises in there, too. Of course, we got Highway Star, which we just heard. We've got uh, Perfect Strangers, one of my favorite rainbow songs of all time, Smoke on the Water. Actually, uh, the purple song, Perfect Strangers. That's right. That's Sorry, right. Sorry, I didn't mean to. No, that's, you 
are correct. <laughs> correct. I know I would have gotten like tweets and stuff. Saying, <laughs> <laughs> you probably would have gotten them too. Of course. You, you know, but um, um, you know, yeah, I, one of my absolute favorites as well. Please go on. Listen, they're amazing uh, songs. Yeah, I mean, uh, Child in Time, uh, Woman from Tokyo, also Deep Purple songs, 16th century green sleeves. I just, it, amazing stuff. But I mean, you get Spotlight Kid in there, which was something mistreated. You wouldn't normally expect, perhaps, at a right. show. These are kind of the deep cuts that the, the fans really love. And to, A, get Richie back on stage, and B, hear some of these deeper cuts, it's truly both Halloween and Christmas rolled into one. Oh, yeah. And, and don't forget my all-time favorite, Stargazer. A Stargazer, yeah. That's a long oh, one. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think hardest thing um, when, when he had doing this project in mind again was trying to narrow down decades worth of brilliant music. I, I, how do you do that? How do you make that into an hour and a half set list, mm-hmm. you know, where you've got not only three so different but so amazing singers in, in Rainbow, obviously. You, know, you've got, you start with, with Ronnie Dio. I mean, mm-hmm. you, could never, you could never duplicate that. You know, nobody's going to get in his, in his shoes. Um, like probably the most powerful rock and roll voice, I would think, in, in my opinion, of all time. Just in, amazing. Um, you've got Graham Bonnet songs. Uh, Joel and Turner songs, and each one of them were all, they were so different. They obviously had the, you know, that um, where Richie was obviously doing every, you know, all the musical ability, um, you know, as far as the, the songs, uh, you know, like the music songs. But in my mind, like when you hear a different vocalist on top of it, it, it kind of brings it to a different area, mm-hmm. you know. So, uh, wh- you know, when you hear a Dio song compared to a Joel and Turner song, they're, they're both great songs. They both have the Blackmore brilliance in both of them, but they're so different. So they actually pull on very different fan bases and fan groups. Um, and it's interesting to see that happen worldwide, where you've got your really intensely 100% Dio fans, and then the Joel and Turner fans, and then everybody, you know, kind of wants more of one and more of the other. And, um, and then, of course, all the purple stuff. Mm-hmm. So to narrow down all of those amazing songs, uh, that, that was probably the trickiest thing to, to do that. Um, I, I, I don't know how he winds up choosing what he actually wound up doing. I know there's going to be a few more concerts that are, he's talking about right now in the future, and I think he's going to switch up the set list a little bit, okay. um, add some other Rainbow songs in there as well, maybe take out a couple of the Deep Purple songs, and uh, I don't know, it's just it's like this changing, evolving thing as we go along, so it's really interesting. Well, Candice, this is the time in the show where you say, and they're going to be in America, and they're coming to Chicago. So that, that's when we're going to have those shows, right? <laughs> well, there there is a buzz about America. There's, okay. I'll say that. I'll say there's a very strong buzz about America. I can't promise that he will be on your doorstep. <laughs> but I okay. can promise that, that there, there's definitely a lot of talk about where he's going to be doing it here. So, yeah. Well, the two shows that are taped and featured on this DVD, Blu-ray, and CD uh, collection are from Germany. Now, there were two shows in England prior. Is that correct? No, actually, we started in Germany. The okay. first show that we did was, yeah, was uh, at the Lorelei Festival, um, right on the the Rhine River in Germany. That was the very first. They they actually videotaped the the first two concerts that he did. So, which were probably the most nerve wracking ones for him because he right. hadn't done this in front of fans for so long. That's what surprises me that he didn't yeah. take the later shows at least after they had a little bit of a workout on stage. Well, the problem was there were only three shows. Hmm. So they wound up doing the the very first two shows, and then uh, the third show was in Manchester, in England. I think, yeah, Manchester. And, uh, yeah, and so the third one was the one that they didn't tape. And so there was only the three shows in total at this point. Um, So, yeah, they wound up doing the first two and and, uh, left the last one. And the last one, I think, was probably, I hate to say it, but was probably the best one, only because at that point the guys were in their comfort zone. You know, they were so relaxed. So, uh, but, you know, either way, I mean, as soon as you hear it, it, it's... It's just amazing. I, uh, so I don't think anybody's really going to be disappointed. All right. If you just tuned in, this is a look at the arts. I'm Tom Lounges. My guest is the lovely and talented Candace Knight. We're talking about Memories in Rock, live in Germany, the classic rainbow songs. Back again, Richie Blackmore on stage, strapped down with that electric guitar that everybody loves so much. And this video, because obviously we're radio, we can't, uh, we'll have to describe it. It opens up with this beautiful landscape with this old castle. And uh, the fans are there and you guys are on stage and it just kicks right in with we're not in Kansas anymore and uh, we're over the rainbow and then the band starts with Highway Star as we started the show. The landscape, the beauty of that is unparalleled. It's an amazing place. I mean, we played, 
in that region with Blackmore's Night for the last almost 20 years, and um, it, it's just incredible. I mean, the, you've got castles on the Rhine River that are just amazing, and there's so many of them back-to-back as you're driving along and doing that, that twisted run down there on, on that water, and, um, and the view is just, it, it's just spectacular. So, it, you know, as you're driving to the concert and you're, you're kind of absorbing the surroundings, uh, you know, it's... It, it's just a magical place to be. So um, mm-hmm. Germany is definitely one of our very favorite places to go. We've been there every year for the last couple of decades. So um, it's a great market, amazing people. And they've been waiting for, for this for a very long time. So we were really happy to bring it to them. As has the world. Why, though? Why now? The last couple times we've talked, you know, Richie was really pretty satisfied. Of course, you guys do a great job with Blackmore's Night. He's got the Renaissance thing going on that is so near and dear to his heart and, and something you guys share together. And we always got the impression that the, the hard rock days were kind of behind Richie. He might dabble a little bit here and there and treat us during a Blackmore's Night show to a little run or a few familiar riffs. But to see an actual concert come together, why? What 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 was the reason now? Now, that this is right for him. Well, you know, Richie is predictably unpredictable. True. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned that the hard way many years ago. So just when you expect him to do something, he's going to do the complete polar opposite of whatever you're expecting. Um, so it's interesting to see his, the way his mind works, though, because we, we were talking about it for, he would touch on it for the last couple of years. I mean, he had the 71 years young, I say, you know, he's like a fine wine. So mm-hmm. uh, he never really, really seems to age. He's, um, you know, he he's, looks he's, great. He's doing a great, yeah, he's doing great. Well, that's what I, I always tell people when they ask about that. They say, you know, how, how does he stay so young? I'm like, well, because I keep him young, but he rapidly ages me. So somehow we end <laughs> up meeting in the middle there. Um, he's so. like Dorian Gray. You've got a portrait somewhere in the attic, don't you? <laughs> So true. <laughs> yes, it's actually in our dungeon. <laughs> but um, yeah, so um, we we had been talking about it and touching on it, and um, like you said, he would definitely break out the electric in some of the Blackmore's Night um, concerts that we would wind up doing. But we we brought it up more and more in the last uh, couple of years, and I think what actually what he told me would actually put him over the top. Usually, when I put my children to sleep, um, you know, my kids are are twelve to twelve babies. They're on musicians' hours, so my my <laughs> my son goes to sleep at midnight and wakes up at twelve o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. So um, after I finally wind up putting the kids to sleep, you know, we have our adult conversation time from like probably until midnight until about two o'clock in the morning. And we were talking about this um, specifically, and I started going on YouTube. It was, it was about one thirty in the morning. And I looked up maybe three different vocalists that um, I thought would be really amazing as far as hard rock is concerned and, and maybe might be able to do some of these rainbow songs. Because, again, it's tricky. They, they need to be able to sing not only purple stuff and have, you know, not be Ian Gillen or be like Ian Gillen, but be able to have a strong enough presence where they could make the song their own, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so nobody, again, nobody's stepping in anybody's shoes, but you've got to be able to really get out there and, and, and do your thing and make people go, wow, listen to that. And again, and not only sing Dylan stuff, but also sing Joel and Turner stuff, stuff, sing, you know, Dio stuff, have that range, but that power. And so I looked up three, three guys. I just was on YouTube doing searches and, uh, I narrowed it down to three people for him. I'm like, well, what do you think of these guys? And he heard Ronnie, and he was like, oh, my God. He said he got so excited that at that point it was a viable prospect. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think before that he was kind of, you know, thinking about it. He wasn't sure. Maybe he should reform it with some of the older guys. Maybe, uh, you know, I, there's, you know, there, there was some, some tensions with some of them. Some of them, you know, but he, he just didn't feel that any of it was really fit right at this point after mm-hmm. so many years in the industry. He, he really wants to, he once said in an interview, he need, he's almost like a vampire. He needs new blood to excite him and to get, you know, get things going. And as soon as he heard Ronnie, he was like, wow, who's that guy? Mm-hmm. And so ironically, I'm, I'm looking on his Facebook page and I'm looking on, I'm, I said, I don't know who, who he really is, but what do you think of his voice? And he said he, he just loved his voice. It had so much excitement and it really kind of kicked him in the butt a little bit and said, all right, maybe we should do this. Let's do it. So... I said, do you want me to contact him? He said, yeah. So I, uh, I got on his Twitter page. And, of course, Ronnie lives in, in Spain. Mm-hmm. So I wrote to him and I said, hi. Um, you know, I followed him on Twitter. And I said, hi, uh, you know, you probably don't know who I am. And he wrote back immediately. He's like, I know exactly who you are. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> at that point, we just opened this conversation. And we were, we were tweeting back and forth, you know, in the messaging back and forth. And, uh, and he was just this amazing guy, this great, like, solid 
mentally stable person, a really good heart, a really good person, um, you know, no addictions, no problems. And it was like, wow, you know, he just wants to, uh, he just is in love with music. And he actually had a rainbow cover band. So we were able to hear wow. how he would be and see how his stage presence was and, and uh, you know, just kind of really, really kind of do our research on him before we even contacted him. But that was really the, the catalyst. It was the, the deciding factor was when Richie heard Ronnie's voice. He said, all right, let's do it. We're- and the crowd goes wild. The man, the woman, the girl, the child on the Silver Mountain. Wow, what a great voice this guy's got. Uh, Ronnie Romero stepping in, uh, helping out on that uh, song in, in place of the late great Ronnie James Dio, and he nails it. In fact, he even gives props to Ronnie James during that song, which I thought was a classy thing to do. You are listening to A Look at the Arts. I'm Tom Lounges on Lakeshore Public Radio, and my guest is Candace Knight, wife of Richie Black. Blackmore, the man behind the music and also uh, singing on this uh, CD and tour. Candice? Yes, I'm here. What was it like for you to step back, so to speak, because you are the front woman of Blackmore's Night, and for years you guys have been doing tours and albums and tours and albums, and you are the, the front and center lady you know, singing all these songs. Now you're, you're, you're back to doing backing. What was it like to step back? Well, I was just so excited that Richie wanted me to do backing vocalists on, uh, you know, as a as a part of this whole project. Um, obviously, I was going to be there to support him no matter what, but I kind of thought I was going to be doing it from the sidelines, maybe back in the dressing room or on the side of the stage. Um, so when he decided that he he needed backing vocalists on this, because really Rainbow didn't have backing backing vocalists till uh, I believe the mid eighties. Right. Um, so when he said, "Yeah, you want to you want to do these parts," and I I was just blown away because. For me, I mean, I grew up with this music. You know, I, I was actually a a huge Rainbow fan um, in my teenage years, and um, you know, way before I met Richie. So um, it was ironic because when we first walked out there on that big stage and and started to do some of the sound checks, um, having done the lead vocal part in Rain in uh, Blackmore's Night for so long, I kind of walked out and went right for the lead vocal mic to do my sound check, and then I got halfway across the stage and went, "Oh, this isn't this isn't where I stand anymore." <laughs> So I have to go in the bag now, which is awesome because you get to uh, be part of the band, but you also kind of get it from a fan perspective. You get to watch mm-hmm. the show as well as being in the show. Um, so it was really, really exciting. And uh, it, it, I, I was just so pleased that he asked me to be be part of that whole thing. Now, the band, uh, let's give a shout out to the band because this isn't the rainbow of yesterday. This is a new rainbow uh, with Richie anchoring it, of course, and all the great songs. And they're nailing it so well. So let's give a shout out to the, the other guys besides. Besides Ronnie Romero, who who all is in the group now? We have well the amazingly brilliant Jens Johansson on keyboards. He was in Stradivarius, still is in Stradivarius. He played with Ingve Malmsteen, Ronnie James Dio. Um, we met him when uh, he lived in New York, and he did um, our second album. He was doing um, Under Violet Moon. He actually wound up doing the the uh, keyboard solo on the song hmm. Under Violet Moon, even though he wasn't in the band. He did it as a session musician. And uh, we met him and, and hit it off, and instead he'd been coming to our Christmas parties and Halloween parties, and uh, then he wound up moving back overseas. So, but the first person I thought of when uh, when we were looking for band members but to, to fill that, you know, those those depths was uh, was Jens Johansson because he's he's just incredible. He's an amazing soloist, but he's also he also knows how to have the you know build the foundation. He can do the sounds of of John Lord, but he can also do you know any of the other guys. David Rosenthal and any of the other guys, uh, mm-hmm. you know, as far as the keyboard is concerned. Um, bass player Bob Nouveau, he was actually in Blackmore's Night uh, probably over a decade ago, I think. And Richie has always loved his bass playing. He, he's just a great, not only rhythm guitarist, but uh, bass player in his own right. He's got the rhythm, but he also, again, has that all important foundation. So when Richie wants to solo, Bob knows exactly how to, how to you know, keep it, hold it down, which is what a, a soloist needs, which you need, you know, someone to really have that the foundation there for him as far as the groove is concerned. Speaking of groove, of course, then that brings us over to the drummer, the, uh, the drummer which is David Keith. He's a, he's a guy who lives here in America. He lives in Connecticut. And uh, I believe he has a band called Mission Zero uh, with his sister, believe it or not. So uh, when he's not playing with Blackmore's Night and he's not playing with his own band, uh, you know, this is what he's doing with us over there. So, And then, of course, we've got the amazing uh, Christina Scleros. She was my my backing singer sister over there. She's actually the backing vocalist as well in Blackmore's Night. 
Um, she's got an incredible range, so uh, that's pretty much it. Besides me and Richie, that's the whole band. All right. How long did you guys have to uh, rehearse before that first show? Again, Richie's known for being a perfectionist, but yet not someone that overdoes anything because I think he gets bored doing the same thing over and over. Exactly. So how, well, how, how, that's a fine balance there. <laughs> He flew the guys out. Of course, the ones like Jens and, and Ronnie had to come in from overseas. The other guys were in Connecticut, so they uh, they came over. And they had three days of rehearsal, probably, I want to say, six months prior to the first show. They basically spent most of the time playing, like, Hendrix songs and Cream songs and talking <laughs> before they decided to break for dinner and just go out and drink. <laughs> so so I'm kind of sitting there like, uh, didn't, don't you guys think you should get these down, like, really solidly? But, um, you know, it's the rock and roll thing. So mm -hmm. they, you know, they, they got it down when they needed to get it down. And, uh, but it was funny to watch the process because at the beginning, I think he really just wanted to see how people meshed, how they really gelled. They, they obviously all did their own homework in their own right. Um, you know, a lot of them had known these songs without even having to rehearse them. They, all they really kind of needed to do was tweak it for the live performances that, you know, how it was going to wind up being. And, uh, and, and so they only had those three days and then they, they took a break and then, oh, they wound up taking a, a break for a, a good six months, and then they only rehearsed uh, overseas probably two days. And, uh, yeah, so it really, really wasn't that long at all. But, but not that you'd be able to tell that on stage. On stage, they just were like puzzle pieces that just fit perfectly. Right. Now, now was this intended to be taped originally when you guys first thought of getting together and doing a couple of shows? Was, was that the plan to immortalize it? Um, I don't think so. I think they, they talked about it for a little bit, and uh, they weren't really sure if that was going to wind up happening or not. And um, <clears throat> I, I guess they kind of pulled that together like the week prior. Uh, we wound up having a friend of ours who runs a, a, a production company over there, and uh, he said he could get it all together by the time they made their decisions on it. So they wound up pulling it all together. But, Rich, you know, again, Richie likes to do things spur of the moment. So right. uh, that's pretty much how we do everything. You talked about possible dates here in America. Do you have any timetable at this point, if and when it happens, when that might be? Um, I do think that they're talking about probably, I want to say June of next year. Okay. Say. And any idea of the geographical region, at least? Will it be the East Coast to keep you guys close to home? Will you be doing one in the West Coast, maybe here in the Midwest somewhere? I'm thinking they're probably talking, uh, last I heard, I can only go by what I heard, and things change all the time, but last I heard it was going to be the East Coast. Um, and I don't even think it's that many dates. So, so now's your time, Tom, to get the <laughs> to start either driving or get that plane ticket. Um, yeah. So um, I think that they were talking about maybe doing the Connecticut area, and then I think they were talking about a couple of more dates overseas. So unfortunately for us over here, but fortunately for the the people over in, in Europe. So, um, and again, this doesn't mean that it's the end. So you just never know what's right. going to happen. Now you're still juggling Blackmore's night dates too. You're still going to be touring with that. Oh yeah, we actually leave. Uh, we leave this weekend for. Uh, we're playing Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. We're going to do the Whitaker Center. We've got a great cooperation with the Humane Society uh, over there, so um, that's going to be on Saturday at the Whitaker Center. And uh, and then yeah, of course we're doing. We're planning our tour dates, our usual tour dates that we wind up doing overseas. Um, yeah, for that as well. So we'll, we'll hit Germany, and I think they're talking about the Czech Republic, maybe some in England. So mm -hmm. we're definitely we've got that in the works. Yeah. Come on, come to Chicago. You guys haven't been here in a long time. It's been too long, and Chicago's such a great audience, such a great. And we played the House of Blues there. Uh, the right. last couple times we've been there. And that was the last time I saw you was there, and yeah. it was uh, it was a long time ago. It's a great venue. It's an awesome venue, and and the, the fans are just amazing there. So. Uh, yeah, I'm going to work on that. I'm right. definitely going to work on that for you guys. Maybe we'll wait until it's a little bit warmer. It's freezing here now. I can't even imagine how it is where you guys are it's right now. It's actually about 60 degrees here right now. You're kidding. No, we're we're getting the winds over here. We had cold and rain a few days ago, and now that the Cubs are in the, the World Series, the weather oh. has become very spring-like. I mean, it's like magic. Oh, see? That's how that works, I think. The, the goat curse has ended, and uh, they're in the World Series after 71 years, and the weather is on our favor, and it's just going to be wonderful, and we're going to win the uh, the World Series, and, and uh, Blackmore's Night is going to come and play the House of Blues for an extended residency, go. so we can come every night and see you guys and dress up and have the whole thing going on. Oh, that's perfect. So then you send the cold whipping winds over here for us and the Mets. And yep. There <laughs> you go. That's how that works. We're going to have to move. It's only the Mets. <laughs> you got me. So... 
Again, we have this new album uh, and CD and DVD and Blu-ray coming out November 18th. It's a, it's a DVD and two CD set or Blu-ray and two CD set with LPs to follow later in the year. Candace, I know you can't stay with us too much longer here. Is there anything we haven't touched on that you would like to? Um, let's see. We're heading into Halloween season, so I'm yeah. excited about that. But I know after that, it's pr- probably too early to talk about this, but we do have uh, you know, our, our Christmas album that's going to be re-released again, Winter Carol. So uh, for anybody who's looking for some early uh, Christmas presents or holiday season presents, I, I'm out in the stores now and I'm seeing Christmas decorations. We haven't even hit Halloween. Yet, I so. know. There's something <laughs> really wrong with that. It's crazy. Well, it was August when they were putting out Halloween decorations, so I don't know what's going on. You're I a big holiday I'd... fan. I know that. Oh, yes, of course. Well, anything to celebrate, you know. <laughs> Besides, every day here is Halloween anyway. <laughs> You're still living in New York, right? Still in New York, still on Long Island, yeah. All right. Uh, well, we can keep up with Blackmore's Night at blackmoresnight.com. All the tour dates and things, I assume, will be put up there, Absolutely. even for Rainbow? Everything goes up there. Absolutely. It's, it's actually, you can either even get to it from richieblackmore.com. Don't forget the T in Richie. So it's all tied together. If you put in richieblackmore.com, it all goes to blackmoresnight.com and vice versa. It's the same site. And we're even on the Facebook pages. We've got Twitter. We've got Instagram. So it's all there. All right. Well, be safe on the road, and please put a bug in Richie's ear to come to Chicago. <laughs> I'm working on it, Tom. I'm working on it. <laughs> we miss you guys. Oh, we miss you, too. Maybe Christmas time, since that's one of your favorite times of the year, we'll have you come back, and we'll we'll play some more of the Blackmore's Night Christmas album. Sounds Fun. good. That's a great idea. Okay, it sounds All good. All right. Give my best to Richie and the band, and keep kicking butt. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon.